Hello everyone, we are back with another exciting video. Before I start with this video, I have few announcements to make at this end of the video. So make sure you watch till the very end. Having a hobby of robotics, I have often found myself in need of a good reliable power supply unit. But here is the problem. They are too costly and way too big to carry around. So I decided to make my own. And here is a list of component you'll need. You'll need a bug boost converter, few binding post, a volt amp meter, banana socket, 10k pot, 1k pot, knobs for the pot, alligator clips, banana jack and hooking clips. And most importantly, you'll also need an ATX power supply unit from an old computer. So let's get started. Step 1. Disassemble the power supply unit by taking out the screws. Cut off all the wires to the 24 pin connector. In the end, it will look like this. Step 2. Making the enclosure. So for the enclosure, I have used sunboard or foam sheet. You will need all these pieces. A bottom, two sides, a top, four rails, a compartment wall, a partition wall and a back. Simply use an exacto knife or utility knife to cut them. Attach the sides to the bottom plate. Also attach the rails to the top of the sides. The gap between the two rails is 4mm in my case. It's equal to the thickness of the sunboard used. The top should slide in easily. Similarly, attach the other side. Now fix the compartment and the partition walls. I'm using flex quick super glue for this purpose. If done correctly, it will look something like this. The front panel is 3D printed in our case for additional strength as I carry the power supply a lot. But you can also make this using sunwood. In that case, the dimensions are provided. I've made this PDF file with all the templates so you can print it out and make the necessary cuts. Step 3. Front panel connectors. The display is just pushing. So now I'll install the banana sockets. I've used different colored ones to denote different voltages. Similarly, attach the rest. The binding posts goes in as shown in the video. Now attach the 10K and 1K port by simply screwing in and use provided nut to tighten. After completing, it will look like this. Step 4. Connections. Although there are too many wires everywhere and it might seem complicated to look at, but it's actually very simple. Here is a wire color code to help you out. The black wire is crown terminal. Orange, red and yellow wire gives 3.35V and 12V respectively. I have used these 4 wires for 3 different voltages. The connections are divided into two main sections, ATX power supply and bug boost power supply. This is a diagram for the ATX power supply. I have used 12V, 5V and 3.3V only, but you can also use the 5V standby and other voltages too. 
So as you can see from this diagram, the three wires yellow, orange and red is connected to a binding post. Also the black wire has a separate binding post. Now the green wire is connected to the black wire through a switch. This switch turns on or off your power supply. The 5V standby is used with a LED to denote power and the main 5V drill is used with another LED to denote when the power supply is turned on or off. There is also a 10V 5 ohm register as a load register. I have not used this because my power supply doesn't require one. But if your power supply turns off immediately after you turn it on, then you need this. Later on, I have desoldered everything and replaced all the low quality wires with better ones. I suggest you do this before. The bug boost converter I am using has a current control. Here is a pinout diagram. So as you can see, there are two main input lines, input plus and input minus. There are two output lines, output plus and output minus, and there are three potentiometers. For one for voltage regulation, one for current regulation, and one for field indicator current regulation. You don't need the middle one. You only need to plug two 10k ports to each one of the voltage regulation and the current regulation. So what I have done is I have basically desoldered all these three potentiometers and I have replaced them with female header. And this is the connection diagram. Notice the use of 12 volt rail as input to the converter. Also take note on how the 10k port and the display is connected to the bug boost converter. And this is the diagram to connect the volt amp meter. So let's now check the fit. Everything looks good here, so I'll continue with the next few steps. I've now installed the front panel and made all the connections following the diagrams shown before. I've also made two screw holes to fix the front panel in place. In the back, I've installed an AC plug and switch to turn on the power supply. The switch is connected to the green wire. After all connections are made, I've wrapped the entire thing in some black vinyl just for aesthetics. Now I've fixed the back panel with flex quick and sealed it. The top panel slides in and I've made a cutout for the ventilation. I will install this 3D printed grill. Right now I don't have any small fan but later on I'll install one. Don't use this without a fan as it turns pretty warm. And here is how it looks. Looks like DIY but works like a pro. I've been using it for quite some time and no complaints there. Raise your queries in the comment section and I will be happy to answer them. And now for the big announcement. So recently we are getting a lot of requests for PC mod videos. Well please be patient and stay tuned because we are working on a case mod. Make sure to like, share and subscribe DB's lab for more DIY project tutorials. Also share your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you.